Praise the Lord. That is my daddy, Matthew, from Verona, Italy. Praise the Lord. I was saying that marriage, as ordained by God, is between a man, one man, and a woman, one woman. Praise the Lord. That is the marriage ordained by God. I'm not talking about the one ordained by the United Nations. Praise the Lord. We don't believe in that. Amen? But the one as ordained by God is between a man and a woman. Praise the Lord. And then, according to the ordination of God, the one man and the woman, they become one. For says, I mean, um, verse 24, he said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Praise God. One inseparable entity. One entity that can no longer be separated. It is as if something that is glued together. Any attempt to separate it will cause total damage. And then we also understand from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, as we look at verse number 14, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and then we look at verse number 14. Whatever God doeth, it shall be for it shall be for our own. And then we just establish that God ordained marriage. So if marriage is the doing of God, it is expected to last for how long? Forever. Whatever God joined together, there is no supreme cause on earth that is empowered to separate it. Praise the Lord. It shall be a lifetime union. Yeah. I said it shall be a lifetime union. Yeah. For I decree by heaven's mandate that this union shall be for life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And paraventure there is any marital destiny here that is expressing turbulence. By the mandate of heaven, I command the peace of God upon that marriage. Yeah. I command divine restoration in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now, what is an enduring marriage? It's one that is kept alive. In spite and despite all circumstances. That marriage is kept alive. It remains fair. Despite the wind of affliction, it remains fair without giving in or yielding. And a joint marriage is one that exists or continues throughout the lifetime of one or both fathers. Praise the Lord. It goes on throughout the lifetime of one or both fathers. That is a enduring marriage, a sustainable marriage, a strong marriage. Praise the Lord. God is the creator of marriage as we have discovered in Genesis. And then, as a creator, he knows what makes marriage to stand. He knows what makes marriage to work. And then he has revealed this knowledge to us through his word. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that, chapter 7, and we'll be looking at verses 24 through to 27. Matthew, chapter 7. I'm just running down because of time. Is somebody there? Yes, sir. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, Jesus speaking, and doeth them, I 
and will liken him unto a wise man. Or a wise man. To his house upon rock. And the rain descended. And the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not. For it was founded upon rock. Praise the Lord. Very upon that house. And it fell. And grace was the form of it. I pray for divine wisdom. Amen. For you and I to be able to build our home on the solid rock. In the name of Jesus. Now we have a man called Dr. Phil. I don't know if anybody knows him here. He's a marriage counselor, a world-renowned marriage counselor in America. Hallelujah. Amen. Dr. Phil. Praise the Lord. But can I tell you something? He just divorced his wife. A physician that could not heal himself. Hallelujah. Amen. What happened? Because his own marriage was built on the sand. It was built on human wisdom, human knowledge, human experience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we are talking about a man that is built on the solid rock. No wind is powerful enough, not even tornado can blow it up. Praise the Lord. Because it is built upon Jesus Christ himself. To build an enduring marriage, it requires, among so many other things, number one, the presence of Jesus. Praise the Lord. For your marriage to endure, it must have the presence of Jesus. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. Hallelujah. Every attempt to build any marriage without the presence of Jesus, that marriage is bound for crisis. So I charge you today, as you get home, hold your hands together and then invite the presence of Jesus into your home. And then especially for you, the woman, a day should not pass that you do not dedicate your home unto the hands of the Lord. No more unto your unfailing hands. Praise the Lord. The presence of Jesus. In John 15 verse 5, you know, verse 5 day, he said, For without me ye can do nothing. You cannot walk out your marriage without Jesus. Praise the Lord. He is the Alpha and Omega. So make him that in your home, beginning from today, in the name of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 3, and the verse number 11. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. He said, For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You can't lay any other foundation apart from the one that has been laid. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Then the voice of God helps to build a rock solid man. You hear and then you obey the voice of God in your home. It will help you to build a rock solid man. Name of Jesus. Amen. So understand, church, the presence of Jesus guarantees peace in the house. Why? Because he is the Prince of Peace. The presence of Jesus guarantees divine supply. I tell you. Hallelujah. Amen. And is the world that can supply miraculously. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the presence of Jesus guarantees unspeakable joy.
in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Praise the Lord. Tell me, you have peace in the house. You have divine supply. You will experience no lack. And then there is joy. What else is lacking in the house? Nothing else. Praise the Lord. So from today, ensure that the presence of Jesus is forever with you. Then number two is unfeigned love. Unfeigned love. That means it talks about genuine love. It talks about real love. It talks about heartfelt love or pretended love. Not Nollywood love. Whatever <laughs> single mother, single father. Praise the Lord. We are not talking about that order of love. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That is the order of law we talk about here. First John chapter 3 and then verse number 18. First John chapter 3, verse 18. Are you still there? Said, my little children, let us not love in words, neither in talk, but in deed and in truth. Hallelujah. Let us love in deed and in truth. Amen. Amen. Look, young lady, this young man that comes to say, prove your love to me by going to bed with me. That is to prove your love to him. It is him that should prove your love to you. And how can he do that? By taking you to Gushi. <laughs> and then kick you up. Amen. Amen. And then on your way back, you drag him to one Chinese restaurant. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how to prove love. It is him that should prove, not you. Praise the Lord. They should ensure that you lack nothing. Having done all that, it will be sensible. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is again, show me that you love me. Even before he says, he says that you already, you know, you are met. Oh. <laughs> praise the Lord somewhere. Yeah. I said, praise the Lord. Yeah. But the order of love we are talking about here is described by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Are you there? 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. It says, charity suffered law. It's talking about law. It suffers law. That is the true law. And then it's kind. Love envied not. Love vaunted not itself. It is not poured on. This is the genuine law. He said, it suffers law. That means one party has to put up with the other. Whatever issue it is, her issue become your issue. My issue become your issue. It suffers law. Notice, oh, no, 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 no. I have suffered in law enough with you. No. There is no. He said, so, how long is long? Praise the Lord. Do not no behave itself unseemly. That is where, you know, inappropriate action comes in. If it is true law, it will not tell you, go to bed with me to prove your law. No. That is not easily provoked. Not easily provoked. Not easily provoked. It is not easily provoked. Because it bears law that it thinketh not evil. This is bears all things. That is true law. It bears all things. Amen. Amen. I sometimes it comes from nowhere. Praise the Lord. And you are done everything right. And 
and you keep doing everything humanly possible to correct what has gone wrong. And then there is no solution. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, under such circumstances, you, are, you should be all such things. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, he believed all things. He believed all things. And I began to think, does it mean he also believe lies? <laughs> but the Bible says all things. Yes. Praise the Lord. The man may have gone to Paris and said, I went to the world. Yeah. And since he tells you guys where he went to, you believe him. Praise the Lord. For the sake of God, I believe. So he he believed all things. Endured all things. Men, there are impossible men. Amen. Amen. And then there are impossible women. We made that no man can live with. Men that no man, no woman can live with. They exist in marriage. But the Bible says, no, endure it. And then perhaps no, but you are bound to death. Praise the Lord. And we are talking about marriage. Amen. We are talking about being joined together. And then once that is done, you are not going to go to God and say, God, my husband snores too bad. <laughs> and like, I can't cope with him anymore. For that reason, I want to be born. As a matter of fact, there is no reason that is genuine enough for the boys, except for fornication, according to the scriptures. Praise the Expect you to bear every other challenge. Think of it. You are expected to bear it. As long as there is no infidelity, there is no unfaithfulness, there is no fornication, no adultery, you are expected to bear in that marriage. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So this is the order of law that we are talking about. And that's why I say it is not Hollywood or Hollywood law. Praise the Lord. That only endure as long as there is song. The moment the song goes down, you know, they marry in the morning, afternoon they seek for the boys. Praise the Lord. That is not for the God ordained marriage. The sacrifice and loyalty. It's required for an enduring marriage. Sacrifice and loyalty. Praise. There is need for sacrifice and loyalty. Please understand that your marriage from today becomes your top priority. Oh, praise the Lord. That is the honor of God. A man shall leave his father and his mother, and they shall cleave unto the world. Destiny, if I need your service and I call you, and there is home and fair to deal with, pick the phone, daddy, I have some issues I have to deal with at home. Praise the Lord. If I understand, move for me. If I don't understand, don't mind me. That's the problem. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry to say, that goes for your brothers, your sisters, your father, your mother. Your money becomes your top priority. No business can be so important than your money. Even if they are going to pay you one million euro. Praise the Lord. I know I'm an hour. It's true. You know what? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Amen. Amen. Money has failed and it will continue to fail. Yes. If you make money, you are gone. I can guarantee when we end. But you have to make yourself your God of your money. 
It is you that should control your money. Your money should not control you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care how much is involved. The Bible says, for what shall a man What shall he gain? Even if he gain the whole world and lose his soul. The people are the people say, you give me Jesus and take the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, young men, know there is a spirit behind money. Yes. That if you allow it to control you, you will make money for others to spend. Yes. Can I say that again? Yes. If you allow the spirit of money to control you, you will make it having mortgage your own soul. You will make money having sold your soul to Satan the devil. But others that didn't know what you did to make the money, they will live to enjoy the money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. You know, there is a place that money cannot go with you. But your family can always be there. There are some issues that money cannot answer for you. That money cannot, money is good. Even the Bible says so. That money is good. It answered all things. Praise the Lord. And you know what? I like it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I am in fair control of it. That is it. I am in fair control of it. You put my family at one million euro, I choose my family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't let any business associates tell you this is what you stand to make. When praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You must learn to sacrifice every other day for the success of the whole. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Loyalty is very important. Nothing should compete for the attention of your man. Nothing. Nothing. Understand? Nothing should compete for your marriage. Amen? There's a place for the parents. And then there's a line they cannot cross. Hallelujah. Amen. There must be a line that they can't cross. From today, your father, your mother can make suggestions, but they can't decide. They can only suggest to you. Your brothers can suggest to you if you ask for it. Amen? Amen. If you don't ask for it and they offer it, thank them and reject it. If you ask for it and they offer it, it should be a suggestion. And that must not be a decision. Praise the Lord. So let sacrifice and loyalty. It is very, very important. You know what? You are going to enter into a bond with this woman today. And this woman, you are entering into a bond with this man today. Between your father and your mother, you did not take any oath. Is someone listening to me? Yes, sir. Between you and your brothers, you did not take any oaths. But today you are taking oaths before God to pledge your love to this man, to this woman. And so because of that, your marriage becomes first before God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible encourages married partners to take care of their home before thinking about church. Yes. Because if your home is not settled, oh my God, you are coming to make problem with the church. <laughs> so first settle the issues of home at home. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. So please from today recognize there is a fundamental shift shift of attention from today. You must recognize it 
If you do not, there will likely be a problem. It must be recognized and then it must be respected. Praise the Africa, it must stop. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. At every provocation, you pick for to call law. Learn to sacrifice and then be loyal to the ball you are taking before the Lord today. In the name of Jesus. And the number four is respect. To make your hope to endure whatever circumstance that may come. Due regards for feelings, what's another's feelings? I still have some rights that must be respected. Amen. Amen. And the fact that I am married to you, a woman does not make me a slave to you. I still deserve, deserve some respect. That's correct. Amen. Amen. There are feelings you must respect. You must show respect for my feelings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you there? Yes, sir. Let me take it from verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Amen. Amen. Whatever is due to him, render it to him. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife had no power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also, the husband had no power of his body, but the wife. Then verse 5 says, Defraud ye not one another. Amen? Amen. So, have respect for one another. And then, most importantly, don't make home affairs a foreign affair. Oh, did you hear that? Yes, you will understand very well. Because in England, you have a home affair ministry. From today, don't make your home affair a foreign affair. Amen? Home affairs must be dealt with at all. Praise the Lord. There are so many of you here that always take your home affairs for the foreign affairs. And in the foreign affairs, you see they have their own issue. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The husband you are complaining about, the woman you are complaining to, wishes that was her husband. Praise the Lord. The wife you are saying is not good. And you are going about to this man. And this man said, This foolish <laughs> How I wish you just drive this woman away. But I let me take her. Praise the Lord. Learn to keep your private or private. Amen. The children you are complaining about, do you know how many people will pay whatever amount is needed to have them? Praise the Lord. So whatever is happening in your home, let it be between you, your husband, and the children. Praise the Lord. It must not be taken out of the home. Because anyone that breaks the edge is made. Praise the Lord. Very important for you. If you forget everything today, remember, don't take home affairs Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. It is very, very important. And then understand, God has ordained order. Don't forget, He ordained marriage. He has ordained order in the home. Ephesians chapter 5. My brother touched on it, you know, a little bit. But let me, you know, say one or two things there. Praise the Lord. My God, you are precious.
Amen. Amen.